tu é, tu é de mim? Hello everyone and welcome to the next episode of uh, Built on AWS. Uh, for the first time, actually live from Australia. That's right. I yeah. just don't have my flat white. <laughs> uh, so this is Ed Lima. Uh, yeah, uh, welcome. My name is Ed Lima. I'm a solutions ar architect with AWS. Uh, I remember we were talking about this months ago, right? So how we should do a Twitch live coding session. Uh, but the time zone was, uh, was a bit of a challenge, but now Aitor is here visiting Melbourne, so we decided to actually go ahead and do a live coding fun session with everyone. Yeah, absolutely. So in this session, we, well, what we're going to do in this session is we're going to use something called AppSync, which is a managed GraphQL uh, on the managed AWS service, which basically will do all the heavy lifting for us on the GraphQL perspective from not, uh, subscriptions, real time, uh, notifications uh, using WebSockets behind the scenes. We're also going to do create a scheme live, no pressure ad, <laughs> and we're also going to do some Fingers coding crossed. for a full e-commerce actually using this new technology. So, Ed, just give us a quick show on how the solution looks like and um, let's sure. have a look. Yeah. Uh, just uh, before we start, uh, not many people know me and uh, Aitor, we are fellow countrymen. We're both uh, from Brazil, so we're going to have uh, session uh, with a little bit of a Brazilian flavor. Uh, we won't have any samba or soccer. Uh, I'm really bad at dancing and I cannot <laughs> play soccer. So uh, let's get started, okay? Uh, so uh, what we have here is, uh, everyone can see, this is what we're gonna build today. Uh, it's a e-commerce lo loyalty um, uh, application. Right, and, and it sells unicorns. And this is already open source, so people can go and. That's bring right. It's already on GitHub. Uh, there's a little bit of uh, instructions on how to do it yourself there, but we're gonna go ahead. We're actually going to deploy the backend and code manually and configure AppSync manually, so everyone mm -hmm. can understand how to do it and how mm -hmm. easy it is. Mm -hmm. uh, and I actually I have the application working here. I can show you. I created a user. Cool, and that's using Cognito for authentication. That's and right. Like yeah. Okay. I guess we can touch on that later. Yeah. Yeah. We're, okay. we're definitely gonna. So you're trying to there. log in, and he asks you for uh, MFA. Yeah. So okay. I just send an MFA code to my phone here mm -hmm. because security first, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so it sends an SMS to your phone, and so I here have here my my uh, app. So I. I'm very rich, I have lots of unicorns here, and I can start just purchasing <coughs> and selecting my unicorns. Okay. Uh, and ordering them, and they're gonna be... Uh, right there. Yeah, right there. Okay. And now, so we, are, we have uh, subscriptions uh, from AppSync in real time. So I have the same app open on my phone. Uh, let me just here. And I can make a purchase here as well. So um, let me do a big purchase. And if you take a look at the number of the balance there, if mm -hmm. I order here from my so phone. That's 899 for now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the balance should change. <laughs> well, it didn't, but we will. Okay. Uh, we will see that working okay. shortly. This is the good news about good yeah. live coding. We can <laughs> troubleshoot the live later. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Right, so if I, got, if I got this right, so people who are just watching that now, so basically it's an e-commerce, all of based on GraphQL and AppSync, yeah. and those points are actually, the unicorns is our loyalty point. That's right. Okay. Actually, it just changed now. So okay. Yeah. And all There's of those unicorns, away. those items on, on, let's say, product table or catalog, yeah. it's supposed to be an item into DynamoDB. That's right. Yes. Okay. Yes. And at the bottom, what's at the bottom there? At the bottom here. Okay, so that's so maybe that's 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 the reason why. So let's yeah, that's a bit. Uh, 
Let's so try that's, again. So that's React on, on you, right? <laughs> okay. So you can try again. Uh, let's order here. And basically, the order is placed. You have an order ID, the date, and mm. the amount of unicorns that you expect. Okay. That we, that so at right. the bottom of the order place, is that another table that you get notifications that's right. from? That's okay. right. Yeah. So if we try to separate this, we'll be a table from the very top from the product catalog. And then at the bottom should be something like order table. Orders, that's right. Okay. And of course, uh, they, the, the, the catalog is related to the orders. And mm -hmm. also we have a user's table that uh, has uh, my, the information about my points, how many points I have, and if I can spend those points on unicorns. Okay. Okay, cool. So how, how do we go from here? Because this application looks like we have a front end. We also yeah. have a back end. Where do we start? Do we start from the front end? Do we create the API design? How would we go from here? Uh, so let's uh, let's start on the front end, right? Okay. Just to get our our environment set up. Mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna be using Cloud Nine here today, and this is our Cloud Cloud Nine, Cloud Nine environment. I already created here a little uh, little uh, boiler boiler boilerplate uh, uh, app. So, mm -hmm. and this app basically doesn't have much. Uh, is uh, if I do npm start, it's just a uh, normal React application. Okay. Uh, so, so this is, might be a little bit small, but that's but that's okay. Let so for me now. just. Uh, it's, it's all right. So do. let's because you're not gonna keep doing uh, that all the time, right? So let's. Oh, that's pretty that. nice. I didn't know that existed. Yeah, there you go. So this is a normal React app. So that's if you cool. use a uh, create React app, here, let me just add a new. So mm -hmm. if you if you basically use a, a npm if you install npm install create react app I'm not going to do it because I already done it but it's going to create that boilerplate react app for you mm -hmm. right So if I remember you you can you can carry on but if I remember correctly that create react app is a it's just a module you install on npm that's and exactly it's a it. CLI that bootstraps yeah. things from scratch. That's right. Yeah. Very similar to the SAM CLI, you can just use SAM in it and it creates a yeah. server. Yeah, basically it bootstraps a, a React app that you can basically use right. uh, from there as a starter app. Mm -hmm. We're also going to be using our AWS mobile CLI and you install in a very similar way, right? Uh, you mm -hmm. install npm install AWS mobile CLI. So it's going to do that for you. Already installed. Okay. And uh, if you want to actually understand how to set up this whole environment from scratch, I wrote a little uh, a little uh, a blog post on how to basically set up init the uh, bootstrap the mobile CLI and mobile init here and how you set up the whole thing. Uh, we can share that later. Okay. But basically here I have my mobile CLI and interestingly uh, what happens with the mobile CLI, it creates this export file when you init uh, the, a project. So basically creates a project on Mobile Hub with a lot of uh, bootstrap, uh, uh, sorry, a lot of uh, backend services available for you. For instance, I have Cognito here. Mm -hmm. I have a CDN. I have uh, a specific about uh, mobile analytics if I need to, to use analytics. So it bootstraps all those, those backend services for you. Okay, right. so if if I get this right, so when you do a AWS mobile in it, it's very similar again to a uh, SAM in it, with yeah. a difference that it creates a exports.js. Please do never change this file. There's yeah. even a warning there. Do That's not right. edit. Do not change. It's automatic. And, and basically, that allows you to add new features like add authentication, add analytics, or add That's right. storage or something else. So you can basically define here and add features, it's a, it's a simple comment. You can add user signing, and that's how we're going to uh, add Cognito to our project because mm -hmm. we need to authenticate our users and you need to know who your users are, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, authentication is a big part of it. Okay. Uh, so it's a very simple. I just need to, to select user signing here, for instance. I, uh, and then I do an AWS mobile push to push that change to my backend. So it's going to connect mm -hmm. to the backend mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, enable Cognito for me out of the box. Okay, so this, if I got this right, because he's using AWS services, yeah. you have to have AWS credentials already completed That's right. and everything. Yeah. Yeah. So I presume because he creates IAM roles, you also need administrator access to this. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, okay. when, you, when you execute the command, AWS Mobile Init mm -hmm. is going to ask you for credentials or is going okay. to direct you to the IAM page to create credentials for the role that it, it assumes, right? Okay. So then you can do everything from the CLI, basically making it easy to bootstrap all those backend services. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. So uh, I, I, will, I will be putting a link as we speak now to the Twitch chat so you can, you can follow along if you wish. Uh, so yeah, let's. Uh, I'm just gonna close this for now, and let's uh, let's just open my React app. This is my my Bootstrap React app, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we had some snippets working on on Cloud Nine, but they stopped working like five minutes before we started this. So I'm it, just gonna copy and paste. It. Always like this. Yeah. Uh, this is like it never changed since That's we started right. doing live coding. Uh, there's always something that goes off, uh -huh. you know, off the edge. But I think that's still the, the good piece of it. We can show, we also make some silly mistakes. Yeah. And then people need to see that on a day-to-day -day basis, that's what happens. You that's need to, right. You you know, find something else and carry on. That's live coding for you. Yeah, exactly. So the other piece of the puzzle that we're working uh, with is Amplify. Amplify is our uh, JavaScript library. It's a declarative li library that makes it easy with to use uh, 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 those front-end services, a few lines of code on our, mm -hmm. on our, uh, on our app, right? So mm -hmm. here I'm basically pointing to that AWS exports file that right. uh, the mobile CLI created, mm -hmm. and I'm importing, I'm bringing it into my, to my app. Okay. Uh, there is another thing that's very interesting about the Amplify. So it, it adds uh, uh, high order components where it can basically uh, implement uh, uh, the, the full uh, authentication uh, uh, setup for your app, right? So basically creates a, a sign in, sign up, forget password, all that for you in a, with a couple of lines of code. And we're going just to add that here as well. Um, and it's all in the documentation. It's very, actually very easy. And I also, I want to have a, a, a sign out bot button available. So I just need to and copy this here. I, I, I must say in the meantime you do this, this is the only time I'm jealous about React. I love Vue.js, I mean, that's my passion for front end. Uh, but when you see it's sim something super simple like this, a higher order component, and you just do a one line yeah. and you get authentication out of the box, uh, this is like, please bring, bring it out <laughs> to, to Vue.js. But yeah, just, uh, just so you know, I used to be a fanatic for uh, Angular. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I refuse to learn React. I learned React <laughs> a couple of months ago, and I'm actually enjoying because of exactly what I said, right? It's very easy. Uh, and here, basically, just to explain, I imported my high order component, the authenticator, and I'm just wrapping my app with the authenticator here, right? And that's mm -hmm. all I need to do. So if I save this, uh, the app's going to be reloaded for me. And there you go. So now I have my authentication out of the box. And you see, like in, in minutes, I mm -hmm. get all this uh, bootstrap for me. I have my sign in, sign mm -hmm. up. I can uh, <laughs> sign up users from here. Mm -hmm. And basically, I need to provide an uh, email and a uh, phone number because I, I receive uh, SMS messages to, uh, to validate my user. Mm -hmm. right. uh, I'm not going to do that now because I'll need to, to provide details about my phone, for instance. But I already did that on this other app which okay. is basically the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's move to the app or the folder. So that's the final one that's going to start to work from basically. Yeah. And with the mobile CLI, I can just do a mobile run. Going to synchronize no my project mm -hmm. uh, with uh, with uh, the backend. Okay. Uh, if I, if I if I make any changes, the run is going to synchronize that, and it's going basically to run my application locally. So okay. as you can see, I'm just synchronizing my 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 project here, and mm -hmm. I'll be able to review here. Okay. In a of the interesting piece I found is uh, I remember when I when I started using Cognito and many other services for outing. Actually, my first real front-end development on AWS, I had to do all of this from scratch. I had to yeah. create a Cognito from uh, using CloudFormation. 
uh, and then look at the documentation, how to actually create the parameters, which one was the correct, how to use a Cognito hosted UI, which the one you're using right now. Yeah. That would take me a couple of hours and she would do all these pieces yeah. and learn to do it. Uh, and that's this actually is like pretty not, simple. This is actually not the hosted UI, it's a, it's a local UI. You can also Ooh. use the hosted UI. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I agree with you. When I started, it, it would take me a couple of hours just to get here, okay. right? Awesome. But all now right. just in minutes you have all of that bootstrap for you. It's great. Cool, let's have a look. So as you can see here, uh, basically I just, uh, so my app's running from localhost again, and I can just log in. I can now, I created a user for this specific app. Add, very yeah. straightforward. Very straightforward. I'm gonna receive a code on my mobile. I just received, and that's what's great. So uh, multi-factor authentication out of the box there. Eight, four, two, five, six. So I confirm. And there you go, I'm, I'm logged in. I have a sign out button. The cool thing as well, uh, it uses JWT tokens and uh, it basically it refreshes my session and it uses a refresh token to use that. So I can be logged in for as long as my refresh token is valid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, so uh, we have uh, part of software front end ready. We have our authentication, right? Right. Uh, now let's, let's uh, take a look at our back end. Mm -hmm. Um. In the meantime, you do it. There's a question on the chat. If you, that JavaScript was never the language, what well, what else would you use? Well, I use Python pretty much all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I use Node.js from time to time. And then when when I need something strongly typed, then maybe uh, Go. I'm trying to learn .NET right now. So it's a yeah. it's a mix, but. Python's still the best one, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be a Python guy, I used to be a Java guy, and now, now I, I, I kind of I enjoy doing JavaScript, but yeah. Uh, we have lots of options, have SDKs that are supported, uh, that support lots of that. Uh, right. Amplify is just JavaScript for now, so, and that's uh, why you're using it. Uh, okay, so here, so what are you gonna do now? Let's start building our backend. Uh, so I have a Lambda function that's interacting with my users table. So this Lambda function do a couple of things. So first it uh, register my user in that table mm -hmm. and it's man is responsible to manage my points balance, right? right? And then I have my items table where I, I store my unicorns and my orders table. Uh, so let's start here with, uh, with the, our, our serverless part of the app or our Lambda backend. So uh, I have here, you have a folder called unicorn users. Yeah. I can see so it. the unicorn users, this is my Lambda function. Okay. My Lambda function is just an empty. I just say reload, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. reload. So let's go. Okay, so we start with a Lambda function first. Yeah. Okay. It's already open on the right hand oh, side. Yeah, sorry. Okay, so you can just bring that back. Yeah. So as you can see, it's an empty Lambda function, right? And you, if you go here on Cloud9, you can basically create a Lambda function like that. You select a, num a name, and basically you can do, you can bootstrap lots mm -hmm. of specific functions there. But I already did that, but it's basically an empty Lambda function. Okay, so let's, let's go that right. And what I had here as well is a SAM template. So mm -hmm. you already talked about SAM CLI, so SAM is a way to describe a serverless environment. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a subset of CloudFormation. Okay. And let's uh, actually take a look at that in our editor here. And this is my, uh, this is my SAM template, right? Okay. So let's go to the SAM template and see what's, what's that doing. Okay, I, I would even close that, that React thing for now because yeah. I'm not gonna use that. Yeah. Let's just okay. focus on, on the yeah, backend right. now. So you can see the code. So basically this is a SAM template and here I'm describing my function. So this is a function that I have uh, and refers to a specific table. So this table, I'm using a simple table here from, uh, and also the, the it's a SAM uh, construct. Okay, and that simple table is DynamoDB it's, if you are just beginning yeah. with SAM. So okay. I have a question for you. So what's the difference between a serverless simple table and a DynamoDB table? 
So the simple table when you're when you're beginning, you, all you need is probably just a single primary key, and you don't need yeah. much into DynamoDB streams or GSI type of thing. You yeah. just need a table to begin with. That's where you go straight to simple table. Yeah. When your needs start to become more complex, or you already get, you know, you got you got the grasp of how DynamoDB works, and you want to add indexes and everything else or even additional attributes to a table, etc. then yep. that's exactly where you go to DynamoDB table. That's so true. my go-to go recommendation is start with the simple table. Uh, so at least you don't really, you know, get, get well with the basics. Yeah. And once you pass that, then you go straight to DynamoDB and start using something that's more right. advanced. So the adventure of the simple table, as you can see, just, it just needs to define a primary key. Mm -hmm. And a primary key is very used for uh, key value pairs and if you, when you have a one-to-one -one relationship. Mm -hmm. But if, when you need things like one-to-many relationships, or you have a, maybe an order in, that has several items, and that's our case here, then you need to create a hash and a range key. And that's why you're using DynamoDB table. And the beauty of SAM, SAM is just CloudFormation, so you can mix and match SAM and CloudFormation. So what you're going to do here, uh, just to speed up the whole process, we're going to deploy. So this is going to execute that SAM template, create those tables on the back end, mm -hmm. right? And deploy my Lambda function as well. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty good. So, so it, in the, what's happening right here is that we could go on onto the terminal again and say SAM package and then SAM deploy. That's right. uh, but Cloud9 has an integration already on the right-hand side. Uh, that basically we just launch a CloudFormation template, so they're all that's the heavy right. lifting for us. That's right. Okay, yeah. that's pretty cool. Uh, okay, so the, the meantime is building that. I, I can even see that deploying to Unicorn. Okay. Yeah. Right. It's right here. That's that's. So great. and this is our Lambda function, right? So there's nothing there. Uh, let's uh, start building the logic here, and demo gods, uh, be kind to us. <laughs> uh, so again, our snippets are not working. So this is basically boilerplate boilerplate code to reinitialize uh, our function. So it just, uh, okay. I'm not going to be typing this because it's, it's going to be people watching me type. That's right? fine. So it's, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Yeah. So if I, if I, if I, if we're beginning with JavaScript, well, all we are doing here is that uh, we're importing AWS SDK. Yeah. From AWS SDK, there's something really, really helpful called document client for DynamoDB. That basically streamlines all the operations to DynamoDB or putting something, grabbing yeah. something, so you don't have to do the raw stuff. I can send you the docs uh, to that piece. And then the table is just a variable. Yeah. From here, we'll be connecting DynamoDB for Lambda, and then we connect GraphQL to Lambda, as well as GraphQL straight to DynamoDB with no Lambda. We're gonna do yeah. both today. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so here, uh, we just need, we're just uh, initializing. And this is the table that I refer on my uh, SAM template, right? So that's my users table. Uh, we're not hard coding the table name, of course, because this is best practice or just referring to the table that, that CloudFormation is going to create. Uh, and let me grab another snippet here. That so I'm basically initializing here uh, because uh, we, we're doing a get and a put to DynamoDB, I'm just initializing some parameters that I'm going to use. Okay, so uh, you may want to just remove the snippets from there so you don't want to get yeah. caught in, the, yeah. in something like this. And by the way, this is live Stack Overflow. Once you, if you find any issues with identation, or actually, JavaScript doesn't have that, like Python. Yeah. But if you find any silly issues or something, uh, let us know. Uh, that will help a lot. <laughs> <laughs> we only have two hours. We have yeah. two, two hours max. We should be able to finish this sooner. Yeah, it should be okay. Okay. So basically, what you do here, we have a user ID, right? That's going to. Okay. User ID. Oops. No problem. And that user ID is going to be passed by the event. Argument. User ID. And that's the key that I'm going to be using to, to uh, search my, my DynamoDB table, right? Okay. Uh, and we're going to have some put params here. Point. 
match. And that's how our points balance. So, so just to double check, is that correct? You have the user ID twice in there. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm just, uh, just okay. copy and pasting. Huh. And just so you, I think I forgot to mention that, but uh, we have, uh, this is a new app, right? And you have a sale. So if you register today, until the end of the year, you get 1,000 Unicoin points for free. And Lambda is going to be doing those checks for us. So if it's a new user, it's going to give 1,000 Unicoins. If it's an existing user, it's not going to be doing that. So if it knows it's an existing user, it, it doesn't uh, need this to go to this sale again. Or else it would be broke. Cool. Uh, okay. Something. And by the way, for those who are seeing this, this Lambda function being built for now, the events.arguments is because we're going to use AppSync and connect AppSync for Lambda. Yeah. All the arguments that we pass as from the API will be into this object called arguments. From there, everything that AppSync passed to us, we can access and we can do something with it. So the reason we're doing this all, uh, with uh, AppSync directly with Lambda instead of AppSync to DynamoDB is that we need an ad some additional logic, uh, some computation before we add something to Dynamo. Otherwise, we could have used uh, just DynamoDB directly. Yeah, so what I'm doing here now is exactly that check that I mentioned before. So if the date where this is happening is before uh, 2019, right, uh, just uh, do something. So if my expiry date is after uh, uh, 2019, so basically just set those points to zero. So I'm gonna uh, ch uh, change the, that, those points to zero because my, my, um, my sale is not gonna be in place. Anymore. So is that point or points? Uh, points. Should it be points, yeah, right? Points. Okay. Thank you, thank you for that. Man. No problem. Save me some pain later. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay, so, so let's, let's double check that quickly. We. We get our, we, we do a get params and put params. The table yeah. is the same. The key is user ID, event arguments are user ID. Yeah. So the, the capital I, table name again, items user ID, get yeah. the user ID from AppSync, username from AppSync, and then we, we initialize with points, a thousand points already. Yeah. And then we add some dates. Okay, that's cool. right. So basically right. you're doing those checks about the dates and the sale. So if mm -hmm. it's after our sale, we don't get any free points. Yeah. Uh, okay, so now we, what are you gonna be sending on our on our event? Well, is a field that's gonna tell us what operation uh, to do. All right. So, uh, so we're going to switch to three options. Okay, so have uh, get user. So we just need to get the information about the user. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you're going to be uh, you be using a register user as well, so let's just break this. That I okay. always forget breaks. That's one of the reasons I love snippets. If you, yeah. you see there was a snippet there, but yeah, fine, cool. Uh, okay, so register. So this is where I'm going to register my user, right? Because right. first I need to check if my user exists. Okay. Uh, I do a get user. So if the user doesn't exist, I can register my user. Right. And then finally. Uh, Finally, I do uh, update user or update balance. Is that, yeah, okay. there's a bunch of capital B, right? Yeah. Okay. I mean, the other break in there. Add the break, and I'm just going to. Option. Uh, Default option is going to just uh, do a callback and send an unknown field. Okay. Let's put here. We didn't understand. Add event. Uh, field. So this is it. So this is the Wait. 
this is the the logic of my fun lambda function. Now let's get some more snippets to okay. start it, right? So here again, I'm just doing checks if the user exists. Uh, boil it code. Okay. Okay. So let's go through this here. So okay, we we do a, go ahead and keep going. I'm just yeah. gonna read for everybody else. In the meantime, this stream yeah. is gonna be updated. There's just a little bit delay. Yeah. So what we're doing here right now is we are essentially doing a DynamoDB get. Remember the document client for JavaScript makes so much easier. We pass that dictionary or that JavaScript object in this case. Uh, and then we have received a callback as a result. We could use also async, await, and everything. But yeah. uh, let's let's just do what we're used to do for now. <laughs> just this is quick. basically straight from the documentation. I just try yeah. to make it easy because that's exactly mm -hmm. the format that we have in the documentation. But yeah, if you if you Google uh, Dynamo do uh, document client on JavaScript, that's that's exactly the format that's there. But you're right. You could use a, a sync await. Ah, and it's ESX. fine. I'm 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 just actually pulling your leg. <laughs> okay, so we actually got this. We, we check if there's any issues, and if there isn't any problems, then we just simply uh, return. The problems there could be DynamoDB is throttling us because we're doing something really crazy, or maybe we don't have enough permissions, which we actually covered in the same template already. Yeah. Otherwise, if the data isn't no as well, we want to make sure that we got something back from that get, and then we actually, complete, we actually format the result that uh, AppSync will be waiting, expecting from us, expecting that JSON as a result. Whenever you're working with AppSync and Lambda, uh, the return should be something inside a result. And in front of result, you will be able to configure your resolvers. Yeah. We will go through all of these details later. You can even customize this, but result be makes it simpler when you are creating a resolver in AppSync. Yeah. We will go there in the next part. Yeah, and, and this is basically part of the mapping template in AppSync. It expects a actual result, and that's mm -hmm. why we're calling result and not a callback. Okay. But this is basically, again, like, as you said, checks, right? Just checking uh, if there is no user there, I, I need to, to I return an empty user. So I'm, 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 I'm staying on the, on the side of the chat. Yeah. Using callbacks in 2018, I know. I already. That's why I was pulling uh, ads like, uh, but live coding stuff. So I, I will not judge uh, ads for now. <laughs> In the meantime, I'm gonna send the link for the document document DB uh, client. Cool. Uh, so that that's actually the callback is what uh, uh, go back here. It's what Lambda uses as well, right? That's where yeah. you you putting using here. But yeah. Uh, and um, by, the, by the way, if we were to using async await, we would just, instead of doing callback, uh, the, the new syntax is just return. Yeah. So that would be just async um, you know, handler, et cetera, et cetera. And it would just return result or the error. Yeah, that's right. Cool. So we got the user ID from there. Uh, so I'm just retrieving the data, right? Yeah. Um, so so if, I, if my user exists, I'm just retrieving that. I love this autocomplete piece, especially for JavaScript. That's the only thing I miss sometimes from a strongly typed language. Okay, there we go. So I'm just re returning my user here. What I love about this, what I'm loving about this tweet session, carry on by the way, is actually opinions and it's, hey, code this way, uh, <laughs> braces and everything. And uh, this is awesome by the way, keep, keep them coming. All right, so you have a DynamoDB put, so that's okay. going to be our register users. That's okay. right. So I had my get, I was just getting my users, right? Okay. And now I'm going to have my... So I, you again, need one more orientation, actually. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Good. This is also really hard. I'm not sure if any of you actually doing Twitch done this before. You're trying, essentially, you're trying, to, you're trying to code something live and essentially have probably 100 people, 200 people looking at your shoulder and saying, no, don't do this. It's like pair programming <laughs> on, on master rights. Yep. <laughs> yeah, my first time was super hard. Okay, so, so we got here, the put params there. I'm actually, uh, you. yeah, I'm just, uh, just double checking here. So, uh, so I'm just uh, using whatever was uh, uh, sending to my, to my uh, uh, on my uh, front end to okay. register the user, the information to register the user on my, uh, my app sync. Yeah. All right. Okay. okay. So I got this. What else is there add? Uh, so get the result and the put params is going to be there. Yeah. That's it. So, and then 
that's pretty much it. And finally, the last piece of the puzzle. Is that is that correct though? So we we call DynamoDB put params, and then we get the data back from Dynamo, and then the result is going to be params put params. Is that is that correct? Uh, yeah, yeah. Because if you scroll up a little bit, yeah, actually, yeah, scroll up to put yeah. params. So we are returning this. We're returning the table name and the item. Should we actually, should we only should... return the item? Uh, I yeah, could be actually, wrong. Actually, you, you might be right. The item. Hey, Rolling Kitty, can you set up a linter with Cloud9? I haven't tried that myself. I believe it is possible because we also have autocomplete. And by the way, uh, the terminal that you see at the bottom of the screen is actually an SSH connecting to an EC2 instance that is running uh, Cloud9. So any tools that you are used to use, for instance, in Python, I would use black for linter or or even auto pep uh, or anything like this for typescript you have other tools as well uh, you can totally do this in fact i when i do vue.js i use eslint and it, it works just fine for me and so our last piece of the puzzle here that you pay mm -hmm. balance but he, i forgot yeah but he, by the way he also has a a a linter by default in there if we you probably see on the line 71 uh it's very it was very quick though it was showing us that there was a a x mark yeah black is awesome <laughs> and and basically that would say hey you're not using this variable or you're not using something like this it's very similar to i think it's called intellisense in visual studio code uh, which i also use i keep switching between visual studio code sublime and cloud9 don't ask me why Okay, so we're already good. That we're, we're now on the update points, yeah. update the balance. So we got to put params, items. We got only the points that's coming actually from the event yeah. arguments point. Okay, that's again coming from AppSync, calling the lambda function. Yeah, okay, actually, what you're gonna do here is so basically, yeah. Whenever you make an order, now you're gonna update points, right? So mm. You're not a new user anymore, and right. you're gonna be spending your your hard-earned unicorns with some awesome unicorns. So what are you gonna do here? Basically, you add whatever is sending as the order, or you know, subtracting to, from your points balance. Uh, and uh, I'm gonna just get from the arguments here uh, the points. And I think that's it. We finish off with our lambda lambda function. Less than 100 lines of code. Uh, so let's let's double check all this just in case. So update balance. So the get user we we are actually getting this event of field. If there's a field in there, we look at the params. Get yeah. make a query to DynamoDB, and okay, and then okay. Yeah. So I'm returning the data from DynamoDB. So if it, the user exists, if not, I just return an empty user right to my front end. Uh, if my front end has a logic that says, oh, if the user is empty, pr proceed to register and then makes another call. Okay. Uh, and this is where I'm just uh, registering uh, okay. the user. All right. Uh, and returning the data that was added there, right? Okay. Uh, cool. So let's save this then. Yeah. So it's and, save and uh, make a deploy. And I can actually uh, deploy now. Right. And that's how easy it is from Cloud9. I'm just. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. <laughs> We're doing that live. You yeah. never know what's gonna break. Okay. Uh, yeah. So knock on wood. <laughs> not gonna break. <laughs> so we're actually making that. But so folks on the on, on the stream with us, now, now is the time you do your fingers crossed. Yeah. We make this deployment, and let's see how you know how is that gonna work. The deployment's done. Yeah. Okay. How do we test this? So now? we can do here actually. Uh, run. Run remote can test from actually Cloud9 itself. Okay. I already had some, uh, well, it's great that Can, can you do it just to increase the, the text a little bit? So that would be command plus. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, here we go, cool. So I had this before and it's cool that it remember my previous test. So I'm just yeah. uh, sending on my field and that's what my switch, uh, my switch uh, uh, loops gonna check for is this field. So what I'm gonna do. Uh, mind you, I could have three different lambda functions, right? But here, just for the sake of simplicity, I'm using one lambda function here. Okay. Right. Cool. So in the meantime, Ed's going to test this. Uh, you probably remember there was a switch case where AppSync will be sending that invocation to Lambda. 
and then the field is going to be register user, which is the action. Yeah. And then the argument is everything that the user has passed through the GraphQL query. In yeah. that case, it would be a mutation or a query. And and then we just test it. That's right. So it sounds like it worked. Let's double check the Let's DynamoDB double table check, exactly. to yeah. see if we Let's have the data there, right? If it worked. Uh, so, so I think we were using Singapore, sign. right? Uh, yeah, but the good thing about uh, uh, Cloud9, I can point my resources to any other region. Ah, that's clever, because yeah. otherwise you would have that already, and that's that would right. break. And we are in Australia, right? So I just want you to be close. Close to heart, right? Yeah. Cool. All right, so here we go. It's awesome. We awesome. got the username, we got the user ID, and we got the points. Okay, great. Perfect. Okay, so for those of you who just started, we are building an e-commerce uh, solution based on unicorns super rare these days you're not you're not going to find anywhere yeah but you also get loyalty points or unicorns once you buy some of those right because we right. want to make sure customers keep on going yeah. and we're using something called AppSync, which is a managed service for a graphql and it does all the heavy lifting for us on the schema that you're going to see right next yeah we just coded the lambda function uh, that basically will be called by AppSync. Yeah. And the integration between Lambda to DynamoDB is now complete. We test it, it works. Yes. Now That's we need start. to build the API, yeah. right? So let's build the API. So let's just uh, recap here, right? So what it done? So we, with uh, two comments and a couple of lines of code, we deployed our Cognito uh, authentication there, uh, our Cognito service to authorize our users, is sending JWT tokens. Uh, we deploy Lambda and the three Dynamo tables. So now is the meat, right? Now is the actually brains of the operation. Let's, let's go, go through AppSync. All right, let's go. Uh, so how would you start? Would you go to that to AppSync console, or would you would you do? So what you can else? do here, uh, actually, let's uh, just. So what you can do is actually I can spin up an AppSync, a sample AppSync API from uh, from AWS Mobile itself. Okay. Uh, so I do features here. And let's just uh, select AppSync. Oops. My cognito. So AppSync is selected, right? Okay. And uh, let it, let's do an AWS bio trigger uh, here. I want my authorization to be cognito user pools. Again. Couple one another line of code. I'm just uh, selecting my user pool. This user pool ID is the same from our uh, exports. exports. Okay. It's right here, right, right here. Okay, cool. And it's already picked that up for me. I'm and going then, to select the region. It's right. a Southeast two, and the the full action is allow if the user is authorized. Now I just need to push. My that is pretty change. cool. So yeah. we, we can even configure, so we configure AppSync, not only a bootstrap API, but we also configure authorization for that. Yes. Wow. I never done authorization on AppSync. That's really, I only did the basic authorization. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So what it's doing here is actually creating a sample AppSync API with sample uh, DynamoDB tables and a sample schema. We're not going to be using that. Yeah. We're just going to kill it, but it's just uh, creating the API for us for now. Okay, uh, and then we get the schema from there, and yeah. then we can start from here. Yeah, right. So sh yeah. should we switch to AppSync console? Yeah, let's do that. I, okay. I just want to show here as well uh, quickly. Our hub, and this is the stuff that's being deployed for me here from the console. So I'm I already have user signing, hosting, mm -hmm. streaming, mm -hmm. uh, and I can go to my. Go to my resources from this page here. Should be right here on your right corner. Yeah, Left hand side. Oops. Oops, what happened here? Go back, go back again. There you go. Yeah. Go back in there. There's a resources on the left hand side. Go. Oops. All right, let me help you there. Yeah. Okay. So, right here, and there's a resource. Then we can yeah. click and can find it. There you go. Awesome. So, these are my resources. I have some pinpoint analytics there as well. Good, uh, but let's actually. Okay, so in the meantime, Ed is bringing that up, the app sync. I will answer your question in a minute about some local is basic when you use AWS mobile, 
uh, mobile CLI, we set up a new project behind the scenes, and that's why it creates that exports file. So it can yeah. sync up whatever changes you're making to features you want to use in your project. And by the way, mobile CLI, it's not only for mobile applications. Yeah. There's a misconception right there that I actually used to be one of those thinking about this space. What happens there, you have two pages, by the way. Oh, do I? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, that's what, uh, going what happens there, there is up, uh, mobile CLI creates this project, which you can export and import in another account or even actually export or import from GitHub, yeah. which actually makes super awesome. Yeah. By the way, this is our AppSync API created already yeah. uh, as a sample, but I think we're going to destroy all this gonna destroy and create it from scratch. We're going to delete, because what's the fun of just using stuff that? Let's build from scratch. Sure, so let, let me send you the page. So that's actually AWS Mobile Hub, which is a yeah. service. Uh, on, back to that, actually. So it's, I have an, an opinion, it's a personal opinion. I think mobile and web, they're blending now. And it's very interesting that you can deploy web applications with Mobile Hub as well. And that's why that's a whole, the, whole, uh, the whole spirit, right? You can deploy mobile and web applications. Uh, so, okay, so here, here we go. So basically, so basically, you can go through that link, uh, uh, Mobile Hub, and then you will be able to see the same page that we were, we were seeing it before. Uh, Oh, uh, Unicorn Demo app page. So that is, so where is the open source? So that's kind of loyalty. I can find it here, yeah. you, you can carry okay. on. Cool. So that page is actually open source right here. And the app is actually also there. Uh, we, as soon as we finish the, the backend, the app sync API, we will copy and paste the, uh, the live one here. And then you can also try that. For uh, Aru Graha or Aurora Graja, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing, it's just a bit weird for me. Uh, the Sam Local, when you use Sam Local instead, Oops. the Sam Local actually is it's all about uh, the Lambda and API Gateway uh, for setting up something local. What we were doing instead is just bootstrapping a, a, an App Sync API directly uh, with AWS. So in that case, uh, Sam wouldn't be able to help us there. What Sam would be able to help us back those was to actually create that Lambda function locally and execute the same, the same event.json that we tested using Cloud9. So that's exactly where you would help. But uh, later we're going to show you today, but you can also use Sam to synthesize the entire AppSync API, the entire resolver, etc. In the link I just shared, you have everything in there. You should be able to see a a template.yaml, and in there you should be able to see the, the, Graph, uh, the GraphQL API. Right, what, what have we just done here? So uh, basically, I'm just creating the very simple schema. So that's, that's what a GraphQL schema looks like. Uh, and you need to define an operation that's, uh, that's actually mandatory, and that's why I'm defining a query here. But okay. the other thing is the, the types, right? So I'm just, I have a user type, which is my user, I have mm -hmm. an ID, a username, and I have my points. Okay. Uh, and I'm defining a query to actually get that user. Okay. Uh, and that's basically how simple it is. I created the user, uh, but also, actually, I, I created the user from my test, right? I can get that user. Okay. Anyway, so I, this is the basically how easy it is to create an app sync schema. What you can do now, it was released, I think, uh, last week on New York, New York Summit. You can actually create from here. Right? You can select types that you just created creates a DynamoDB table for you. You can uh, select indexes and also generates a GraphQL <laughs> schema for That you. is super easy. Out of nowhere, That right? is easy. Yeah, but easy. what's the fun of it? The fun is to build. We, we, we go to the hard yes. way, right? Hardcore. Yeah, that's that's right. Brazilian way. That's Awesome. That's okay. Right. We're going the, the hard way, but that's the best way to learn anyway. Okay. Uh, so, okay, you have a schema here, but where are we getting the data from? So we need to set up data sources, right? Cool. Uh, so I have those, this is sample data sources yeah, here. We, we can just uh, crash that, we create a new one. Yeah, so just, just going to delete this, we don't need this. Okay. And let's create a new one. Our new one, we're gonna call it users because that's where I'm storing my users and my, and my uh, points. Right. So I define the, it's a Lambda uh, data is that source. It's a Southeast Chew, I suppose, right? Oh, Not Northeast. Sorry, yes. And then I have so many Lambda functions, we can just search for 
points. This is what's created by Sam. Mm -hmm. And when you create for Cloud9, it actually names with the Cloud9, so you know. Okay. And it's going to create a role for me that uh, is going to allow me to access, uh, app sync to access DynamoDB. So cool. that's it. So that's my, my data source. I have my schema here. Right? So how do I link the two of them? Mm -hmm. uh, it's very easy. So as you can see here, uh, uh, I have my, my on, the, on this right side, I have the, the, the types and I have my operation here. So okay. what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna attach that operation to a data source that uses Lambda function that I just created. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, it already uh, configure a mapping template for me. Uh, I'm just going to uh, change that slightly, right? So as you remember, we have a field and we have some arguments on our Lambda function. So let's define that here. Uh, so I have a field. Okay. The field is going to be a get user. That's, that's how my switch statement on, on my Lambda function is going to be triggered. So I'm okay. just going to send that to, to my user. And, and if I remember, there was a, a arguments. Yeah. And then as arguments, you can pass whatever app sync. That's exactly it. Okay, it's, you're missing a double quotes there, just in case oh, we don't get caught yeah. there. Okay. What, what would I do without you? <laughs> All right, so we got, the, we got things from the context, right? Yeah, and this is actually very cool because it was released last week as well, so we have some oh, well, yeah, auto, we don't auto have complete, access to this before. right? Uh, okay. it's, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to do a YouTube. YouTube to JSON, right? Yeah. That's right. So to, dot to, to JSON. JSON. That's right. And I think you're gonna pass the context. That's right. Okay. I'm trying to remember. I think you have a dollar, right? You have oh, to. You have to use a dollar. Yeah, to the dollar is on the the YouTube. Oh, yeah. okay. So, so it works the, like this. The dollar, yeah, it's it's only on the because I, if, if I look at the response mapping template, I thought you had to access add a dollar oh, no. to context. I'm sorry, yes. This is right. Okay. Again, ah, cool. Uh, yeah, there you go. Sorry. Because that because the autocomplete wasn't working, so yeah. I wasn't quite sure. Yeah. Okay. So uh, yeah, you need dollar to do the, to do the autocomplete. Uh, okay. So okay, I think that's it, right? I have my. Sure. Let's uh, give it a try. So if you remember correctly, we we set up the lambda function with a switch case where basically you had an operation. An operation yeah. would actually invoke the lambda function. Yeah. That's exactly what we're doing. Every time they make a query to a GraphQL. Uh, API, which is our AppSync API, yeah. we invoke the Lambda function and pass that payload as the event for our Lambda function. So you probably remember we had a switch case on event dot field, which in this case is you get can user. Maybe go back here, right? Yes, let's go back in there. Yeah. So if you scroll up a little bit, so we should it. we get the event dot field. What we are wiring up right now is if the if the query is get user, which is exactly the get me yeah. in GraphQL, you can't to execute this this block here. Exactly. So yeah. cool. So now cool. and that's exactly how we're gonna map uh, AppSync API to Lambda function. We could also bypass this and just use AppSync straight to Dynamo. But we're gonna do this next. Yeah. Let's first make sure this works. Yeah. Let's go back to AppSync. Yeah. And so I just want to point this little piece here that's very important. So as you noticed before, I configure my AppSync table to my AppSync API to be authenticated by Cognito, right? Right. So and that's what it uses here. So let me copy this, and you're gonna see why I need to copy this shortly. The cool thing about the AppSync console, you can make queries straight from here. Okay. As I I linked my AppSync API with user pools, you see here I oh, need to log in. Okay. Uh, well, because the JWT tokens, that, that's what's authorized my call. If I'm not logged in, I'm, I'm going to get an error like this. That's right? pretty cool. Yeah, it makes so a lot of sense. So I can actually okay. uh, use this here. And if I have my, my user add. Oh, I see. And look at this. Okay, I have an FA enabled. Wow, this the well, well done, everyone, for the AppSync team. Yeah. This is super awesome. I mean, come on. This is fantastic. That make it so easy, but you know what that allows, right? Because when I was you need to click oops. there for first. So if you never if you never done AppSync before, when you create an AppSync API, uh, beyond just allow you to do autocomplete into the schema and everything, so you can also in. make queries, make mutations or changes, updates automatically from the console as well. And you have docs on the right hand yes. side. That's it's because awesome. of my schema. Because how AppSync works, I can basically 
uh, I have documentation out of, out of the box here. It knows what I need to do. Yeah. And the cool thing here, actually. So you need so to do a query first yeah, and then brackets. Yeah, you need to do a query first and it auto-completes for me. So you don't need the key, right? It just, it, it could be anonymous. It, it can be anonymous, okay. yeah. But here it auto-completes and as we, we, we uh, recall before I created a user that's just called point. Okay. Uh, and I can just get the username and the point. If you've never done, try that first and then we'll explain what's happening here. If you never tried GraphQL before, let's see. Okay, Oops. no. There was a Oh. So now you, you reach your first. You would need to enable logs first because otherwise you can't see yeah. the logs, right? Oh. Yeah, so okay, so let's try to troubleshoot then now. So let's enable logs. Enable. And, oh. okay. A roll. Actually, we I weren't expecting that one. Okay. Are we using the right region? I, I, I stuff is to yeah, that's correct. Because yeah. we can log in with the record. Okay. So, here. so the logs may take a while to stream, but let's. So you need to click on the logs first. Yeah. And let's do. Yeah, it's still getting. Okay. So let's the, try it, it, on lambda first. So I, I think we tried that, but let's let's do it again. Uh, we do the register. But yeah, let's not try to get you. Uh, Maybe we have an issue user. there. The user ID was one. The username was different. Let's see. okay. Oh, response is null. Let's mm -hmm. go back to your lambda function there. User access is returning null. Go back in there. So now is the time we try to troubleshoot and you need to help us. So user access, there was an issue there. So if there was an error, if that one isn't, is oh, not Oh, I actually, forgot my callback. Oh, that's why, <laughs> that's why I'm not returning anything. So, oops. <laughs> well, live, that's live coding for you folks. That's why I have my callbacks here, my callbacks Go back here. in there, let me see it. Okay, so you have yeah. a rollback result. Okay, let's yeah. save it. Okay, let's Deploy. save it. And deploy. deploy. So you were supposed to help us, by the way. That was supposed to be the agreement between <laughs> us. If we, if you saw something super silly like this, you were supposed to tell us you forgot the callback. You need yeah. to return something. <laughs> uh, I know, right. I know, David. You know, a few other people don't really like uh, uh, the callback stuff, but yeah, we we missed that. Okay, hopefully that's the only thing. Yeah, let's right? try now. Uh, if let's see if my Yes. Wow, there we go. Yes. Woohoo! Now it's working. Yes. Okay, so yeah, try to increase the text a little bit. I know I will try to explain. So mm -hmm. that would be command uh, plus. Let me try to explain very quickly. So what AppSync will do for you. So you can do something like this. You can basically say query name and then parameters value. And then anything inside the bracket will be whatever attribute you need you want so this is what's returned and this is actually the query on the top and i just can select wherever i want to be returned yeah so i, I, ju I just posted on, i just posted on the chat that's the period of, of of graphql as well because i define how my data is formatted and what the format of my data right and then yeah. i select what i want to get back exactly so which it gets which is you fantastic. exactly what you want no overfetching no underfetching yeah, which is perfect if you have mobile and you have, especially if you're an architect or an enterprise architect, you may have heard of something called a backend for front end, where you create multiple APIs for different yeah. type of users. In this case, AppSync is a single API. All you need to know is how you're gonna query, yeah. how you're gonna make changes. And if you go back to the schema, you can see how simple that is. Yeah. You define a type called user, yeah. you define its attributes, user ID, etc., And the exclamation mark is, it's a required field. That's right. And even better, you can do authorization per field as well. Yeah. Which is even cooler. To. Maybe we're not going to do this today, but at but least you, you just get the users. select in the resolver and basically you do the authorization here at the mapping template. Yeah, you can do conflict resolution as well from here and lots of other things. It's very, very handy. Cool. But now, okay, this is very, you can only read data, right? So you yeah. need actually to write data. And that's where our application is going to be doing as well. So I need to define a mutation here. Yeah. And this is GraphQL terms. So mutation yeah. is anything that you're going to change. So think yeah. about a, a create, update, and delete in yeah. REST terms. 
Yeah, so mutation is going to write that. The query is going to read that, right? Yep. Um, so let's uh, let's create a mutation to register users. It's going to be register user, yeah. and then we which which parameters do we need? We so need we need the user ID. Mm -hmm. uh, so basically, actually, you're going to pass on all the data, right? The user ID uh, and the username. So the user ID, which the ID is required. The username, and that's all going to be retrieved on the front end uh, from the JWT token that Cognito is passing, and the, the username is a string. That's going to be a string. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, and that's from the type user. This is the type user that's uh, allocated to the application. So after that column is actually what you want return. Yeah. And b when you do this, remember when you are doing the query and we're specifying what exactly I want to return. So that's going to be the users there and we can see what yeah. attribute we want yeah okay. so i'm gonna uh, just cheat a little bit and i'm gonna copy this okay. and you're gonna see the there, same you know it's okay. working because it's the exact same thing here it's just gonna change the it forces to define the data source which is my lambda function okay. but it's just gonna change that field to uh register user. Register that's register a switch user. case right that's so right. If you're just beginning right now, so what we're doing from the AppSync is uh, AppSync will provide us the GraphQL capabilities, the mutations, the queries, the subscriptions or real-time data changes, etc. And once you make those, once, once you define your schema, you need to tell AppSync, how do you get that data or how do you change that data? Yeah. What you, what, so that could be a DynamoDB, that could be Elasticsearch. That could also be a HTTP endpoint. That's right. And what we're doing right now is using a Lambda function to retrieve those data from Dynamo. Yeah. But later we're gonna we're gonna use just Dynamo straight. Yeah. And the the cool thing you can test and prototype straight from here, right? So I do a page, and I'll, uh, I'll show you uh, shortly why I'm putting names for my mutations. So I can come here and I do a register user. Uh, let's. Uh, Create a user ID two and username called test. Okay, and we also need the return. You yeah. see that why the reason is red is because we also need to finish that. Yeah, user ID and my. And as, as you notice in my Lambda function, it's a new user, it should give me one okay. right here. And that's the reason why I name, because then I have different uh, uh, operations here, I can just select the operation. Cool, that's why you put a name to it. And there okay. you go, I got my 1,000 points. Awesome. And we also see Works. the logs. Yes. High five, man, that's yeah. pretty good. Ha! Working, Okay, awesome. so we're actually moving forward, and yeah. uh, that's awesome news. So just because, in case you never use this before, once again, you see that register user and get user, we pass some parameters and we can return. Add, yeah. click on the mutation on the docs right-hand side, right hand side. there's yeah, a documentation okay. explorer. That's click it. Click in mutation, you can see exactly what we just done. I can see my types, I can see so how you register I, should, user. I should make my call. And you know, when you're actually developing the application, this is so useful because you test right here and I can just copy and paste this to my front end because that's the exact same call that my front end is going to be making. Absolutely. Cool. Okay. What do okay. we do next, Ed? Awesome. So I think we have our user, uh, your user. Uh, so let's go back here. So this is nailed down now, right? You have uh, users and we have, uh, we have uh, the logic to register users. Uh, actually, we also need a logic to update the balance of the user, right? So uh let's uh, let's do that so that's going to be the third part of our uh our uh, switch case there so i'm going to date uh, date balance balance and i'm going to be passing as well the uh, same thing as well as points Okay. And that's going to be an integer, and he also returns a user. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. exactly it. So you save the schema, and because it's a mutation, the mutation will go automatically. Here. And we attach the same thing again, yeah. right? 
And let's go again and cheat here. Okay. Just copy and paste because you don't want to waste time. Oh no, you click on way too, way too back. Okay. So here I'm just going to select again my only data source and I'm going to. We use... both are. That is correct. So I had someone at judging us, but because of the accents. I mean, not judging <laughs> us, but trying to define where we come from. But yeah, yeah absolutely. As, as I mentioned at the beginning, this is an episode full of a Brazilian accent and Brazilian <laughs> flavor, without the soccer and without the samba. No, the samba is actually still right there. It's in our hands. So. Okay, yeah. so we got update balance as the field, and we got yeah. exactly the same thing. That's Service right. over, and let's give that a try. That's so, it. So now I can ah and go back here again. Uh, ah, two, yeah, absolutely. So I actually, so living abroad for quite a few years, I think you you can spot a Brazilian just making a side joke in the meantime. <laughs> Ed's making more, trying to get Ed less, you know, less stressful, you know, etc. Is uh, when you use two and uh, I think think th and especially when you say okay. Uh, a Brazilian will always say okay. You try to say okay like an American or a British, but it, it never works. But yeah. now in Australia, I learned mate. Yeah. So it's, uh, no dramas, mate. That's ex so it's fantastic. And also the flat white. So I got a new addiction now. Oh, uh, yeah. So this trip white. is getting a lot of rewards for me. Uh, best coffee in Australia, sorry, uh, Melbourne. That I have it's to now, agree, yeah. As yeah. a Brazilian, I have this time to say Brazilian approved. Uh, this is really awesome. It's much better. So what I'm, what I'm gonna do here, let's try to update, make that user one J Doe a rich guy. See if that's gonna happen. There you go. Awesome. So it's all working. So if you, if you let's actually screen, uh, resize the screen a little bit. So I wanna see the parameter, and I actually over there in yeah. the middle. So I just wanna resize it a little bit. Uh, to the right a little bit. Yeah. So what we're doing here right now is, uh, <laughs> uh, is, Update user balances the new mutation we just created in our API definition. We pass the user ID, the username, and we pass the points that we want to change that now. So essentially, as in the front end, after the user actually you know makes a purchase of a unicorn, we want yeah. to subtract that, and we should be able to use the same API. That's right. Once we do this, we want to be able to return the new points. Yeah. And in front there, we can do whatever we want. Yeah. That's okay. right. So, okay, so that's uh, one part of our backend is working. Uh, we have here a Lambda function logic, app sync, sending, getting validated tokens and validated users and sending that data to DynamoDB. Okay. So now you need to actually have our unicorns, right? Okay. Uh, so let's start that way. First of all, let's uh, add our, uh, our DynamoDB table. That DynamoDB table is the one we created using SAM, right? Yes, okay. that's exactly cool. it. So, okay. so now we're going on. straight to Dynamo. Uh, <clears throat> so I don't the one. I sure. trust table. Sure. Carry on. Uh, the difference, what is the difference between GraphQL and SQL? The difference is that SQL is a normal language, you know, this SQL language uh, for querying something to the database. Uh, the GraphQL is actually a query language uh, is a generic query language based for APIs. For APIs, yeah. that's also based on a st in a, st in a strongly typed uh, schema. So it's very similar. Actually, the beauty of this, if you if you haven't noticed, is we could use dyna multiple DynamoDB tables and have GraphQL to query multiple data structures, yeah. very similar to a join in a SQL. Uh, for that's instance. right. So that makes so much easier than trying to do all of these hard wires inside your Lambda function or your code. Uh, the other thing as well, uh, uh, GraphQL is agnostic, so you could potentially have a Lambda function that calls an Aurora SQL database. Absolutely. And actually doing the GraphQL queries that trigger Lambda to query the database. Very similar to what we did with, with uh, Dynamo. Absolutely. The main difference there, which is something I particularly love and I found very powerful, is GraphQL allows us to do two things that are incredible, uh, incredibly powerful. One is as you make the query or as you make a change, updates, anything you do, you are you basically give control to the client to say, I only want this part of the data. I don't want any all the returns back in. Imagine you're querying a whole e-commerce catalog. You don't want every single product of it, or maybe you want to do some pagination. All of this stuff is actually handled by AppSync already. 
and the GraphQL gives the power to the client to say, I want only this, uh, this data for my mobile uh, app and I want this X amount of data for my web app and so forth. And more importantly, you have subscriptions, which we're gonna, sh we're gonna show that at the very last, uh, the, the, the very last few minutes. As you change something using that update balance, for instance, you can attach a subscription and say, whatever that mutation has happened, that change into a data source, I want you to be notified and I want you to know exactly what has changed. So I can immediately or in near real time update my front end users or whoever is attached to that subscription. Basically, it uses uh, WebSockets and that WebSockets, which as soon as you connect to the API, will deliver those changes for whatever subscription you want. Plus, you can also specify not only I want you to be notified as soon as something has changed, I also only want X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Right? Am I That's explaining right. that correct? That's exactly it. Yeah. Okay. No problem. <laughs> Uh, so what you did here, I'm just creating items, so which is our unicorns, right? So I'm just, that's a type of the item. I have a description, a price, a count, and also create this thing called connections. Okay. Uh, connections is a very cool GraphQL capability. It's basically using built-in pagination, right? So I'm just gonna show how to, uh, to use connections as well. Uh, okay, so we have our type, and now you have to start uh, creating our unicorns. So let's... Let's create our unicorn uh, rotation here. So we're basically adding a event. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here, uh, uh, add two things. I, I need a description and I want to also add the price. And that's basically an item for me. So I'm basically adding uh, my unicorns. So let's save the schema. Uh, my mutation now should be here and attach that mutation now. Okay, so let's, let's do this and then later I'm gonna recap very quickly yeah. to everyone. Sure. Cause I was actually you know, sure. doing on the chat and everything. Oh, so let's select the items table. So yeah, uh, uh, we have two data sources before our Lambda function here and now our, our items table. And the cool thing about AppSync here, we have lots of templates on how to actually uh, get the data. So already built in for us. Uh, awesome. But what are you doing here? We're just putting an item. And mm -hmm. that item is uh, item ID that I, that I defined before. Um, okay. And is that going to be an auto ID or is that going to be an, an, an argument? And that's the beauty. So I can just generate a unique ID on the back end. I don't have to pass an ID. So, so my app sync back end is generating IDs automatically for me. That's amazing. And that's uh, going to allow uh, my, my item to be a unique item as well. And the ID is basically the primary key on my Dynamo table. That's even better because yeah. you are at, at one of the issues I had with Dynamo when I, a few years ago, probably four years ago when I was beginning with this. It was I. I didn't know about actually having a you know unique a yeah. kind of a you know sparse key, so I could have you know that's evenly right. distributed. And that actually does all the heavy lifting. That's yeah. awesome. So uh, that's why you need to pass. You just pass an item ID, and that's it. That's it. Because okay. uh, it's and, and I'm passing the item ID. Sorry, and the attributes I'm sending. Right, so the, which is the description. Got and you. So the attribute, so the put item is the normal, as, as if I was yeah. doing from the SDK, That's put right. item, you pass the key exactly the same yeah. as a document client. Yeah. And attribute values is going to be all of the arguments, the parameters yeah. from the query, or actually yeah. the mutation. That so this is basically a VTL language, right? So I'm just putting, creating a template that's going to translate into uh, a way that Dynamo understands that. I just need to add, create a, an ID and add my item there. Right. Okay. So now let's start creating our unicorns. And that's the exciting that's... part. All right. Let's go back to queries. Yeah. So uh, now I'm going to create a mutation here. Mutation. mutation U for unicorns and I'm going to add inventory. So here I'm going to add a description. The, uh, it's the string, I suppose. Fantastic okay. unicorn. That's cool. Do you want to bring the, the documentation yeah. as you go? Actually, no, no, don't click it. Click yeah. on docs and okay. mutation. And that's going to be add inventory. So you need yeah. add in description. 
in a description in a and a price, and a price. An integer. And okay. as you have the exclamation mark, they are meant. Yeah. Right. Okay. So since this is a fantastic unicorn, let's price it. I don't know, hundred dollars, two hundred unicorns. Uh, and I want to get the item ID. So so let's just show people that I'm creating. I uh, AppSync's creating the ID for me. Uh, so my mutation. Oops. Missing key item ID. Error here. Uh, let's check here. Okay, you let's go back to stations. Item. Ah, uh, there is a typo here. So it's item uh, camel case and an extra uppercase there. Let's try again. Just saved. Mm -hmm. So that's a cool thing. I can uh, can uh, just from the same console. I can uh, actually run the queries and troubleshoot and very good experience. So there you go. My first unicorn was created. So let's have a, a cheaper unicorn now, right? Average, average unicorn. Okay. Uh, so I'm gonna create it in my average unicorn. And then you get everything and back. And then. I have, uh, in the meantime, uh, <clears throat> Ed is actually doing this. If you missed this part, is we already have the query capabilities and, and actually getting the users and getting the loyalty points for these users, as well as changing the loyalty points as soon as they make purchases or whatever they do. Next, what we're just completed or completing right now is we need to add items to our catalog to our e-commerce. Uh, we already have an items table already created for us. Yeah. And in the app sync piece, we're doing the API now design, which we need to add those pieces. Yeah. Once we complete, then I think we can just jump to the front end, connect the dots, That's and then right. we off you go. That's right. So we, we're halfway there. So I just uh, create a couple of unicorns, as you can see here. Let's go to the Dynamo table. Let's see uh, actually there. What's even cooler, if you haven't noticed, is that uh, the DynamoDB can keep growing and growing and growing. And as that table grows, here we go. go. We can see all those items in there, but actually AppSync also does pagination for us. Yes. If we if that table grows for a let's say 100 items or something, yes. the GraphQL uh, API or AppSync in this case, we do the pagination for us and we will do all the heavy lifting and the users from the front end still do a simple query. Yeah. And he gets our array as a return and he can actually keep receiving those data in streaming actually, mode. Actually, let's show that right now. How, how we can do that sort of thing. So let's uh, let's add a query, uh, and our query is going to be to uh, list the inventory. Inventory. Uh, so and here I'm. Um, to create the connections here. Right. So Connection. okay. <clears throat> so you're gonna query that list of inventory returns an item. Items connection. Yeah, we're gonna have to add some couple of things, but I'm gonna show you what. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Okay. So if you go now to the query list inventory, we can attach the resolver. You can right? attach the resolver. We're going to the users table there. Okay. And here I can basically. Is the users or the items oh, table? Oh, sorry, that's the item. Okay. Uh, so as you can see, changes. So I can list my items. I'm gonna do a scan, and I select image, and the next token. Interesting. So next and then in that token, case, we're, we're setting up the limit yeah. as 20. Yeah. Okay. So, so you're going to have to pass a limit. Uh, and the next token, which actually, is going to be the pagination token yeah. from Dynamo. It's actually first here. Let's change it to first and the next token. Okay. Um, okay. So by the way, the request mapping is <clears throat> what AppSync will call the data source with. In this case, it's going to call DynamoDB with a scan operation and it will pass that limit and the pagination token. Yeah. So we need to change the, the parameters or the args so it, it matches our request template. Yeah. So we need to pass the first as an integer. So basically how many actually we want to have in a batch. And then we also need to pass the next token, which also comes from uh, the items uh, connection. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so and we pass just this. save this. And now let's go and do a query just to list our, uh, our unicorn. 
times. So, uh, okay. priori, go ahead and do it. Uh, Nick, in, uh, yeah, the question is, can I, are you looking at the Atino or S3 select for data sources? Not at this time. So, AppSync will connect to DynamoDB, will connect to Elasticsearch, a, any HTTP endpoints that we can make a post, get, etc., and also a Lambda function. If we were to use S3 or Athena, uh, something that could be also done, we would be use we 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 would use uh, AppSync Lambda, and Lambda could make a call to Athena, get something and return, and then the client will be able to define based on this return what attributes do I want, and then you could define this on your on your schema into yeah. the AppSync. So what I just did here does it hopefully hopefully it answers your question and it makes sense. So add. What have we done? So we now did a list inventory. Yeah. We passed only two items. We see. passed the next token, but we didn't pass yeah. anything, right? We just no. passed next token. It's generating for me. So my front end can use this token to retrieve the next two items if I need to. Or uh, makes sense. Yeah. So basically, uh, and the that's return what's used should be for an the array. Yeah, that's Got right. you. Okay. So here I have two items. If I want three items, just select how many. Then I can do my pagination easily that way. That's super right. awesome. Yeah. And that's, that, that, make, that makes so much easier from the front yeah. end. That's pretty And one of the cool things, if you haven't noticed as well, is up syncing that's from a GraphQL perspective, you are directly thinking how the business logic should do and how your business yeah. actually should, contri should, know, should benefit from this. You're not even thinking about servers again. We're that's not even right. thinking about CPU, memory, and all of these pieces. We're going straight to this is exactly how customers should receive the data, should be yeah. able to interactive data and that makes us so much easier we already even created DynamoDB tables all of these pieces without even thinking about it yeah you're thinking about your application you're not thinking about your infrastructure or anything like that so right. basically again as you said uh, uh, focusing on your business logic cool right. and we have 20 minutes more or less to go yeah so, okay, we, so we did what have we done there we did uh, all of this so pinpoints deploy for us and we did the items and the user table. So now the last piece of the puzzle is ordering. So when I purchase my unicorn, so how can I uh, actually uh, put orders in? Okay. So uh, we're going to go back to our schema, actually a data source again. Uh, let's point to the orders table. Okay. By the way, this is the, this is the link of the full source code. My table here. It's some issues with we are fast. currently building. So in case in, in case you need access to that, you can do a Git clone later. This is the full code, including the GraphQL queries yeah. and from the front end perspective. Instructions there as well. How to everything, do it. yeah. From app sync schema, the whole API is actually there. So in case everything goes wrong for the last few minutes, we can just cheat yeah. and use some of that as well. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so let's create let's create an orders structure, right? Yeah. So I'm okay. gonna have an order that has an order ID. No problemo. Thanks for staying on the stream and chill now. Actually, I really appreciate that. Hopes hopefully we're learning something and as we go. And also I'm actually learning a lot from that. I didn't know about the new features of the resolver autocomplete. And I also didn't know that you could do authentication in the console. You could yeah. have cognito it's and you cool. could also actually log in with cognito to make those queries. That's pretty awesome. Okay, so we get an order ID, which is gonna be uh, mandatory. Item ID also mandatory. User ID, a date, and a count. Okay. Yeah, how many items I have in my order, right? And of course, the number of the how how much <laughs> money awesome. I spend on my order. Okay. One of the awesome things about it is that if you notice as Ed is actually typing, you can see the type order, order ID, etc. We could even say users, and it would return a user's type. And that would do a connection between both yeah. structures from different tables. We could do all these pieces. Yeah. Now, hopefully if not we today. Have time, we, we, we show you how to basically uh, 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 connect those different tables with one query. Right. See. Hopefully, we're gonna. Okay. So we created the, the the type called order. Yeah. We create the orders connection so we can do pagination if That's we need. Right. And now we will need to attach the resolver to that. To, do we have the query already? Uh, I no, don't I think have we to do. add a mutation. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So let's awesome. get the mutation. Uh, and by the way, if you're beginning, if you are, you just joined at the very minute right now, and you missed some of those pieces, we are creating a full e-commerce, um, unicorn e-commerce. Let's put this way. 
uh, on AppSync using GraphQL, a managed GraphQL service. We are also using Lambda to generate the users and some of the, some of the default unicorn points or loyalty points. And everything else, we use straight connection to DynamoDB. So AppSync has an API, and through the API, we will query, make changes directly to our DynamoDB tables. Everything that relates to the user, some user checks or some points, definitions, etc. We go to a Lambda function as our interceptor, and Lambda connects to DynamoDB. So whenever you have something that requires additional logic other than just making a query or making a change into a DynamoDB table, uh, you can use a Lambda function to intercept. One question that I often get a lot from customers is, I have this GraphQL thing that I love to do it, but I also have a legacy application. How do I integrate uh, uh, each other? How do I integrate both of them? You have now something called the HTTP endpoints, which I can send you the link. And you could also say something like this. You have a brand new GraphQL API with all these capabilities, all these powerful returns and subscriptions. And you can use a HTTP endpoint as a resolver. Let's say you create a type code, um, product order or product catalog. And product catalog or slot delivery from an e-commerce has to go to the, the legacy backend because you're still migrating or has to be there in that way. You can use a HTTP endpoint make a call to this particular endpoint, whatever the return that backend returns, you can use that and make it more flexible for the client to say, I only want this part or I only want whatever. The same happens for when you're making change to this lot delivery. For instance, you're making a lock into a database, into the old backend that you want to make sure that all the other clients will not be able to select that slot delivery. And all of these pieces can be facilitated using AppSync in this. Yeah, so just... Uh, oh, hang on. We wrote... so there was, well, well, Hang on. We had an issue there. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Gorgo. Sounds like in the schema, we wrote Toto with double A. Oh. We okay. had a typo there. Thank so you. So maybe open up that in a new... Open up that in a new tab, I think. Ah, that's fine. Oh, yeah. So let's go back in there. So... Uh, ah, thank, thank you for spawning that. Thank yeah. you so much. Woohoo! Save us some time there. Great. Thank you. See, working together. That's, that's great. That's what I call live stack overflow. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Thank you for that. So let's go back and create our. So I created now. my type and I'm doing exactly what I did before, right? So I'm adding. Uh, I have an order ID here. Okay. And, and I got from the I arguments. Some attributes here from the argument. Let me just. Uh, okay. uh, just to save some time. Okay, so that's new. Before we actually were getting all the values, all the attributes yeah. automatically. Why are we doing this? We're doing that manually now. Uh, it's because yeah, we're passing some some items from the on the front end, yeah. right? And just capturing that uh, that those uh, the data in in the mapping template that's gonna send to uh, okay. to Dynamo. So here we're just capturing the actually because we're sending the that data from the front end. And here, uh, that's another cool thing. I'm not sending this because what I'm gonna do is actually captures the... Oh, I see why we're doing this right now. So I can explain to everyone now. I in in the previous, you can carry on, I can yeah, explain yeah, that. Sure. In the previous resolvers, we were using uh, whatever the user front end, back, whatever, anyone who's making the call to the API, was actually passing the parameters through the GraphQL queries or yeah. mutations. And then we'll pass whatever the user has passed to us straight to the resolver. In this case, DynamoDB or a Lambda function. Yeah. However, in the orders table, we want to make sure that they, we know which user who's already logged in yeah. make that purchase. So we need to customize whatever we pass to Dynamo. We could pass everything that the user passed to us, but we could be smarter about this. We could also do everything that we, the user has passed to us. In addition, we can say, hey, Cognito, what is the user unique ID that's logged in? And we can pass that in yeah. instead of it just passing a generated user ID. That's the beauty of it. That's exactly it. Because uh, basically, AppSync knows a user ID that's sent on the GWT token. And my mapping templates, it's already detecting that. So I don't need to pass that from my... Awesome. Okay. From my front end, and we had some some things here that are really cool. So you have the YouTube. utility. So you can you can pass uh, generate IDs. You can pass also uh, things like. Time. It should be a date, right? Yeah. Timestamp. 
I remember I had this issue in the uh, past. I know you can type ad. I know you yeah. can. I'm trying. I'm trying. It's a lot of pressure. The question, there's a way to use MongoDB database with AppSync. So as long as you can connect that either from a HTTP endpoint or for a Lambda function, which I would definitely. prefer, yeah. you can definitely do it. The beauty of AppSync, because you can use Lambda functions, you can connect anything that a Lambda can reach, be that through a VPC or something through a HTTP uh, anything that's public, right? Yeah. So as long as you can do that programmatically within five minutes, you could definitely do that as well. Uh, obviously, I wouldn't recommend reaching to something that would take five minutes in this for the sake of the user experience. But as long as you can do this programmatically, you can totally do this. Okay. HTTP Resolver. Let me actually get you the link for this, Nick. Uh, the HTTP Resolver, as you, you saw ads doing... I can show you here, actually. It's okay. very easy. You can do okay. a new... Let's go. Let's do uh, that. Like that. Why not? <laughs> yeah, why not? You can select HTTP Resolver from here. And you just you just put your endpoint there. It can be an API. It can be a REST API. It can be anything. It's so, awesome. so, Nick, in the meantime, you've probably seen this, this screen right there. Yeah. Instead of selecting a DynamoDB and making the query and everything else or a Lambda function and the payload we're going to yeah. send, which basically just say if they call uh, uh, update balance... Yeah. We send that, that the whole query, all the par parameters and etc. to a HTTP endpoints. Yeah. As a, is, is that as a payload? Is that as a query string? Uh, it's as a payload. Okay. Yeah. So it will send as a post method to the endpoint that you define. So that is exactly how you could uh, connect to a REST API that's already there. Or if you have some additional logic that has to be done, you can just say call this Lambda function. And from the Lambda function, you can call this REST API or something else. Hopefully that clarifies. Oh, yeah, so if you, oh, I'm sorry, uh, for the MongoDB, uh, if you can, exp I think MongoDB Atlas, if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong here. You can expose as, uh, you have a HTTP proxy to Mongo to certain queries. If you cannot do this, then I'm completely wrong, and you should not be able to use HTTP, HTTP Resolver, but only Lambda function to connect to Mongo and make queries uh, as you normally do uh, through the page, etc. So, yeah, I could be wrong on that. Thanks for actually uh, grabbing me on that. So let's see if our mutation works. Hmm. Okay, so Kenrick, your questions about uh, concurrency and everything else. If you go to the AppSync console right now and you click and create a simple uh, ap application, one of those is actually a chat application using all the subscriptions, as many users, etc., including authorizations and everything. From the pricing perspective, you can go straight to the AppSync um, page and you can double check in there what's the pricing look like and, and everything from there. Uh, also, by the way, every AWS service has a page called limits, um, which basically you can find out what are the current limits, which ones you can increase and etc. So I was just going to send those links in here and then send you the limits as well. Okay, so, so I'm getting a permissions error. So let's find out what's happening. Uh, so I actually experienced the other day, for some reason, it's reusing my, the IAM role. Other, other tables. Uh, not quite sure. It's going to be a lot. We just want to explore. You remember uh, is that the unicorn orders right but that, that that's gonna take actually no problemo we have a table name there you go then you have a lot of those why don't you decrease your your, your screen just quickly Okay. Can so you it's gonna be one of the Okay. I wonder if you can see the role from from the apps in console. Then you go straight to there. By the way, we're trying to troubleshoot. Yeah. We we just added the, the whole mutation to the orders table and we're actually having permissions issue Let's to see make here. a change. Actually in there. I'm gonna tell me what's the W K K. The third one from yeah. top to bottom. Awesome. Here we okay. go. And that's a problem that I, I so it's basically didn't update my uh, my policy. Yeah. 
So click on JSON. Yeah. So here, as you can see, it's just showing my items table and it's using the same row for some. So it's supposed to create a row for that. You will need a comma there. And yeah, also, we just copy so everything. Just copy that. The troubleshooting. But that's live. that for me. That's the beauty of explain live coding. You want to make you want to make sure when things go south, you know how yeah. to troubleshoot and you know uh, how to go from there. Oh. So I got the whole table there, and then replace the other ones on the top. So now you have and let's permissions to put items and get items from both tables, right? Uh, right. Not sure why you didn't that uh, didn't do that before, but uh, good. Let's try again. Okay. So Nick, I'll reply to I replied to your question in a bit. Let me just let's just actually make sure all of this works for now. And there we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Awesome. Good. Here we go. Awesome. So question for Nick. Yeah. Uh, when you use HTTP resolver, can you access incoming authorization and pass that along to the mapping? Uh, so that you theoretically, you know, make a you you can make a HTTP yeah. let's say use Cognito. Yeah. And then Cognito Definitely. user is already registered and you want to make a HTTP a call to a HTTP endpoint. Can you pass that, those authorization to you as a HTTP headers or something like this? Uh, definitely, yeah, because because you're using the mapping template and you're okay. using VTL, you can basically add anything to that VTL. Yeah, think of it, uh, so AppSync is intercepting the call and it's enriching or adding anything on that VTL template where it can send your backend. Mm -hmm. And it does that with Lambda, with DynamoDB, with Elasticsearch, and, and HTTP endpoint. Uh, okay, so I think we have everything working. Time to actually. Uh, I found it for you, Nick. So here's exactly the page in the documentation. If you just scroll a little bit, uh, you will find something called configuring resolvers. In fact, let me give you the exact link. So in there, you'll be able to see the mapping template, and you can pass. You can configure the HTTP headers you're gonna pass, and everything else. Because the authenticated user is on context.identity, you should be able to pass exactly what we just did for uh, the DynamoDB table. Yeah. So it'll be something like context.identity.sub, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. That should be able to get Cognito, authenticated, unique user ID. So you'll be able to pass that from the headers. Actually, uh, let's do one more thing here. I think okay. that's what we have 23 minutes, so let's see. How we so go? No putting any pressure, uh, but okay. just make sure we go. We Almost time there. So let's put the subscription. This is the last piece of the puzzle, right? So we do. Types. That's how. Our, uh, our real time. Wait. So subscribe. So I'm just naming it. Way I named on my front. User. Okay. And carry then, carry on, and then I will explain that. Okay. So so blue raid when you when you create a new AppSync API, very similar to a REST API, you are still able to define uh, how the endpoint is going to look like. Uh, from AppSync, from the very if you create a simple schema or a raw schema nothing there you will get by default a slash graphql and you also get a api key by the by default so you can make queries to this if you later change your mind like we did we could change this to let's say slash unicorns and you can also change to any other authorization mechanisms you see fit you could use cognito you could also use open id or other things as well or like aws i am for a strong authorization using sigv4 but sigv4 first will be an overkill so Ed, what have we done there? So I'm just at the subscription, and that's all. That's okay. how easy it is. So now I have uh, real-time uh, notifications using WebSockets out of the box, and all I need to do is uh, 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 link my subscription to a mutation. So every time the I call this query, this User mutation, uh -huh. sorry, uh, I'm going to be using a subscription as well. So whenever the is, uh, if you remember the very first time where I where I. Uh, I did a purchase on my phone and showed up on the Okay. On the can, you scroll, can you scroll down a little bit? Let me just explain the, your subscription very quickly to everyone, yeah. and then we grow for the last piece of the yeah. session. Who? When you define a subscription, you're basically saying, what is the name of your subscription? Subscribe to points. Yeah. So from the front end, you want to say, I want to know whenever points have been added, yeah. right? Or have been changed. Yeah. And I want the, the return will be user. Yeah. So I want you to be able to see the whole structure. 
if we if we go to the documentation, we don't need to go. Yeah. It will return if I remember from my head is the user ID, username, and the points. Yeah. And then you have uh, if I forgot the name now in the GraphQL terms that at, at that's uh that's basically uh it's not an annotation I forgot it's an, the name it's now. an annotation yes. yeah uh but basically that's it that's that's how we link uh, we have that specific one on AppSync that links that subscription to the mutation there awesome okay but okay cool let's that's, go to uh, the next one let's go to end game here so what I did I just uh, cloned my repository right. okay uh let's uh, here I'm going to in the meantime, you do this. this. I'm gonna get the the link to your to your code, and I will I will show you some of some of the GraphQL that the front end will do uh, for us. So I have. Uh, of course, I'm just gonna copy. Sure. Okay. I run AWS Mobile. It's gonna create that AWS exports file again. Uh -huh. And I'm I have a CSS framework. Okay. For those of you watching that you never never done never seen that how would you automate all of these pieces from a schema perspective, from queries, resolver, uh, request, response, you can find exactly under that folder in the source code. I just sent you on the chat. So you just copied everything? I copied my, my front end, right? So mm -hmm. maybe you can actually go quick. And did you change the HTTP, the API? Cannot modify owner ID. That request everything went. So when you copy this, uh, do you need to change the exports because you're making a change in there? So AppSync is updated correctly. Yeah. And the mobile hub definition. That, that looks good. Is my export. Okay. Fingers crossed. And then you get your, yeah, here we go. Oof. There you go. There you awesome. Go. Okay. So let's now preview. This is pretty awesome. We don't need to try this more. Okay, so it's actually running our uh, my yeah. It's complaining about Bootstrap. Let's do an npm install. So okay, install Bootstrap. No, <laughs> silly things is basically. Yeah. Okay, so if I got this right, so people who are following is we we clone the whole app now. Uh, we did we basically are installing all the dependencies, everything yeah. else from React. And when you run uh, that particular mobile CLI again, we are actually now pushing that to an S3 bucket where that CloudFront will be uh, getting us to it. Yeah, it's just keeping it synchronized uh, with, the, with the cloud. Whoops, so it's too. It's just because it's still getting there. So look, show me the code on, on the query. In the meantime, it's actually yeah. showing that. Sure. So because we were using the console to do all the queries and everything. So here, basically, I have. My app.js. Bring that to the left. Okay. But what I'm doing here, I'm just uh, shadow facts is one of uh, So I have my Amplify, the library of Authenticator. And here I have my GraphQL mutations, exactly the same mutations I was on my, on my app sync. So I have the update to the balance, create order, uh, I'm just initializing here my components. Actually, no. okay, okay. Uh, there you go. Let's try the app first, and let's see if all of the backends are actually working. So I get my user. I get my one thousand points. New user. Can we actually bring and bring that to the browser? Can I, awesome. Can we actually bring that to the browser so it makes it easier for us? Uh, to set up? That actually yes. I, I think there's a browser there. Uh, oh, there is. Yeah, there you go. That's that's a cool thing about uh, about uh, Cloud Nine as well. And I, I'll show you for comment. I, I'm gonna publish this to CloudFront, but here I can just oops, oh, I, 
That will break our application. We're yes, not doing input yes. sanitization. So that's something yeah. you should not do at home, by yes, the way. You should you do should. input sanitization. <laughs> but that's it. So I, as you can see, my balance just changed okay. automatically, and uh, my order was placed. Uh, so let's come here and can, update my balance. Can you do me a favor? Let's see if the subscription is working. Yeah. Go to go to hackmd.io. Hackmd.io. Yeah. It's just a, something we can collaborate very quickly. I just yeah. want to see the URL. Yeah, here we go. Click there. Create a new guest note. I will paste it for you so you can also have the link. Yeah. Um, so as soon as that opens up, you should be able to see a new guest note. And then let's actually try. I want you to get me the URL. So it should be the blue button. Not sure why it's taking that long. Uh, actually, this is. Uh, actually, they won't be able to access this because this is internal. But it can access access my old. Ah, okay, so that, never mind then. Yeah, so. yeah. But I can uh, we can show it uh, basically here. Ah, that's a Cloud9 yeah, app. A cloud. I thought it was a CloudFront. Oh my yeah. bad. Okay. But uh, we can do the CloudFront very easily, actually. It's a matter of fact. Let's quick. By the way, we're in the last few minutes, so everything that we've, we set out to do, it's working now. Yeah. So less pressure on us now. Yeah. And let's see if we can give you the app so you can try and give it a try to that as well. And then we can test uh, the subscriptions to see the whole points being changed live as well. So, it uh, needs to be seen as S, AWS mobile. Oh, uh, yeah. So basically. That's your very last minute. So that's, we still get some you know, yeah. nerves being settled. Uh, it does that. I don't know why. I use, it's using the 610. Okay. 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 So this is going to do the same and it's going to publish CloudFront, right? Okay. But in, in the meantime, we have our app here. And uh, let's actually run a mutation from... Uh, app Sync. Okay. So let's make sure we can wrap up in five minutes so we can yeah. roll back uh, and just do a recap for everyone. Sure. Uh, maybe this will be. You want to grab the context from there? Uh, yeah. So where is the. Do a right click in there in the page. Right click, inspect. Yep. Here we go. Uh, hey, uh. Oh. Right click. It's, it's mostly because I also have a, a ad blocker in place, etc. Uh, this is because uh, uh, actually Cloud9 uses. Uh, Uses app sockets as well. Okay. But anyway, let's just go with some. So what do we need from Dynamo again? I just need to get my user ID. Just. I'd say. Close some of those tabs, you're not going to need it anymore. Uh, just so we don't keep re uh, reloading everything up. Close the React tab. And then close some of those pieces as well. You don't need the old horn. You don't need to buy anymore. Okay, cool. that's back back there. We're still loading. But if I go back to Twitch, actually. Sorry. Cloud9. Here we go. I have my out from. Let me try to type this in. X. My oh, app. Yeah. Go to Dynamo. It's loading. By the way, if you want to give it a try, this is the link for you. Give yeah. that a try. This is the new one that we just published. So, Ad is going to try to do a. Log in very quickly, and then we can test the app already published to, to something we, we know it should work. 
I think my laptop is going crazy now <laughs> on the fan. Yeah. So let's see here. Five, four, two, two. I'm logged in now, and now let's try to find emojis. I gotta sign up here as a user. Let's see. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah. Come on back. Have my user still. So there you go. This is me. Okay, so let's where okay. can here. I just sign in. Let me and see if I can update see. Update uses balance here. I want to get rich now, people. I want to get lots of unicorns. Okay. Let me log in with my new user in the meantime. Let's see if I can see some of those. There you go. And you should see here on my app. The one? Yeah, that's the one. So if you're trying that on your computer right now, you should be able to sign up as a new user, get your phone, and you should be able to see a, should receive a Gucci Factor authentication as I just received. Let me try, and I, I already started with 1,000 points. So our APIs and love the functions yeah. are working correctly. Let me try to buy some in here, and we try to order, and I got the balance already automatically updated yeah. very quickly. Awesome. That looks pretty cool. Yeah. Shall we wrap up? It works, yeah. Uh, yeah, for some reason, I think might be some issue with the, the subscriptions there, but it should, uh, yeah, you can try, you have the link there and you can try yourself, but the, the subscriptions, they were working at the beginning. So if you click on the network, we should be able to see a, a so freeze that. Yeah. So remove that console because we don't need that, that stuff. Do a refresh, refresh the page. If we see a WebSockets connection right there, you see there's a, there's a WS on when it, here we go, serviceworker.js. Yeah. So let's yeah. try this again. No run. Let's, I think we should stop here right now because we only yeah. have two minutes. Uh, yeah, okay. we, just, we just need to. We almost got it. Yeah, so go back to the, to the, uh, the open source uh, page. Go to the GitHub page. Yeah. Uh, well, let's just give it, a little try here, just really quick. So let's uh, let's see if it works now. Nine nine. Oh, here you go again. Nine yeah. nine nine. And there you go. You sh you should see a bunch of GraphQL calls here, and these are the WebSocket connections. So if, if, you, if you if you filter that out, you see that all hidden data URL. Yeah. There's a WS there. Uh, where, uh, where below there? below. Line below, WS. Yeah. Keep going, WS, until you find WS. Here we yeah. go. Click there. We will filter only for WebSockets yeah. connections. There you go. And, and now you should be able to see it. That's it. Uh, so let's uh, let's go back here. So this is where you can find the code. There's actually a little uh, workshop-like step-by-step where we go through uh, to how you can actually uh, run this. You don't need Cloud9. Uh, so let me close. So this. scroll down slowly because actually there is some delay. You know what, Ed? Go back up, build the architecture. Yeah. Let's actually wrap this up. Yeah. We are almost right out, out of time. Grow up to the architecture. Yeah. With this. Okay. Yeah. I need to blow the browser. Thank you, Gorgo, for actually uh, going to all of those, those, those crazy endpoints. Uh, <laughs> so, so, Ed. Uh, thank you so much for doing all this stuff for us. You're Let's welcome. just recap for those of you who stayed on chill right now. First of all, thank you so much for staying on the stream up to this point and helping us to build. Gorgo, thank you so much for helping us with that little uh, silly typo we had yeah. in the total. That saved us uh, probably 10 minutes or so in the stream. Sure. Thank you so much for that. What we just built, I'm just going to walk you through very quickly because Ed already did all the hard work, is... We added, we had a front-end application in React. We used Create React App to bootstrap a simple application. Then we used a framework called Amplify, which I also sent you the link. And Amplify allowed us to actually do all the hard work of connecting to Cognito, 
AWS Mobile CLI did all the hard work of bootstrapping all the AWS resources we needed from DynamoDB table, from AppSync API, and Cognito user pools, yada yada. Later, we added the first AppSync to a Lambda function. We did all the code, actually, Ed did, I did nothing. <laughs> Ed coded the Lambda function that would call a DynamoDB table called users table because we actually needed additional logic to add a thousand points to any user who logged in for now. And after that, we coded the whole AppSync schema from scratch, actually adding the users, adding the balance points, adding orders, adding products to the catalog. And instead of using Lambda function, we actually use AppSync integration directly to DynamoDB. We also got out to complete as we were writing this piece, we got documentation from there, and we also got some cool features. We got yeah. WebSockets for notifying everyone that data has changed. Yeah. We also we also got pagination, which is by far my favorite piece. And from there, that's it. We yeah. we only spent a few lines of code in actually Lambda. Everything else was primarily to the way the user should yeah. see the data. I just want to show really quickly here. I g added some homework for you guys here, right? So I, you can basically, I, you can add some more functionality yourself. Just give it a try. And also here you show, you show how to connect those two tables with one query. Also, we have pinpoint analytics. Whenever you buy unicorns, you'll be able to go to a pinpoint project from mobile hub here on the resources and access all that analytics data. So all for there, you have your unicorns and also you know how your users are purchasing unicorns. Okay, so uh, Dikovic, uh two things for you, because you said you don't have much experience, so the, although it was great, so it don't have much. Thank you, two links. One, it's exactly what ads is showing up. We can You can use that as a workshop, go step yeah. by step to build everything from there. Also, we have something called developer workshop on, on, our, on our GitHub, which is something that Chris Munns and a bunch of other awesome folks, uh, George, for instance, are actually doing and rolling out as well. So if I just send it over to you, there's one in particular that builds a AppSync API for the old weather application. So not only you can get hands-on experience from AppSync, but also from Lambda perspective, there's a bunch of other stuff uh, out there as well. If you wanna go a step beyond, or actually even better, if you wanna take a step back to learn serverless from scratch, building up a Lambda function, building up API gateway, and all of these pieces, we have something called wild rides which basically is a seven or eight hours yeah i'm long uh it's, you don't have to do all of this but you have great modules workshop in there. yeah yeah so you can actually go there and you can see look up for a github uh here we go and you'll be able to see uh things from the very basics or things like some cli yeah. using local development on their laptop for lambda function and api gateway deployment, doing CI, CD, or multi-region, or even business workflows. All of these pieces are actually there, public, ready to be consumed, and give that a try. That's right. Other than this, again, thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Ed, for actually being here, the guest co coding this awesome application. So it's All my this pleasure. hard work for the open source and everything. So it's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. That was lots of fun. My very first time live coding, and that was my very first React application. I learned two months ago. So you And this is the first time doing Australia. Yes, that's right. That's you did right. great. Yeah. Amazing, man. Thank you very thank much. Thank you so much for everyone, and uh, thanks for watching. Have See you later. Fun, guys. Just, just say, oh. And of